If I knew back then that I'd be in this position, I might have made different decisions. I might have avoided certain people. I might have kept my guard up. And maybe, just maybe, I wouldn't have given you the benefit of the doubt. Because when you left, my heart was left with a drought. You took my water supply, made me shatter into pieces. But everything is not what it seems. I laugh on the outside, but on the inside I scream, help, please help me. Vulnerability blinds me. The emotions are surreal. You were in and out of my life in the blink of an eye. It started at the beginning. I ignored flags that were red. And although you broke me, turned my world upside down, I thank you. You didn't deserve me. I deserved more. I thank you for making me realize my worth. Realize how beautiful I am when I smile from my corny jokes. The way my eyes light up when I read a book. So never mind you, let's talk about me. A charming queen, a goddess in disguise, an angel who sings angelically. I love me, the way my short curls bounce when I dance in the rain, remind me that there is hope even on the gloomiest of days. So thank you, because I now know what I want. Someone who sees the value in me. I know what I need. Constant love, attention, loyalty. But most important, I know to be happy. All I need is me. I am becoming who I thrive to be. If I knew back then that I'd be in this position, I would not have made different decisions. Because I've learned to love me. Prince died, Sarai Santiago. Prince died, and Doris Roberts died, and Monica at work, her mother died too. And death is a funny thing, you see. One moment, you sat next to me for my high school graduation, and the next, you were rushed to the hospital, unresponsive, connected to tubes, looking like a science experiment. And you didn't wake up for weeks, but you look so peaceful, the most peaceful I've ever seen you. And you have no idea, but while you were away, 
Everyone around me spoke like I wasn't there. Poor girl, what will she do without her mother? Do we have enough to cover the funeral expenses? And I still went to school to be on your good graces. It wasn't easy, let me tell you, but I did it for you. Today, you sit with the hole in your throat. A machine helps you to breathe. But when I walk into room 316, you wear the biggest smile just for me. And you write on your whiteboard with the black marker to ask how my day went. My day was good. Every day is good so long as you are here.
This is not the last time. Sydney Solomon. This is the last time you are going to put yourself to sleep in a bed saturated with wetly depressed tears from the unrealistic relationship of you and the one who is not meant to be. This is the last time you are going to be deprived of endless nights of sleep over a human who is not altogether emotionally developed to be available. This is the last time the coffee taste is expired and the gas tank is almost empty from the exhausted usage of extra speed to get to your destination on time from result of putting your tired skin and blood to rest late in the almost perking morning because you have consumed every piece of your body over the one who has broken you in every possible way. You committedly tell yourself this is the last time because the heart and body cannot handle the suffering pains no longer when realization of better deserving has come upon the life you exist in. But this is not the last time because you are going to drive home in an exhausted car to your saturated bed of wetly depressed tears only to wake sleep deprived to energize your body with a fresh cup of expired coffee because you still love the one who has broken you in every possible way. How can something so dead be so beautiful? The tombstone so meaningful. The columns, the rows, this is where they were disposed. I'm curious the life they had lived. Was it worth living? Are there people still visiting? It's been ages, yet on occasions you receive considerations. I don't mind being six feet under, but who will I be next to, I wonder. Compelling to see how a piece of stone of where you're supposed to be supplies comfort to those in need. The mourners traumatized by their horrors, hearts scarred because it was too hard. closer to you. The last bit of residue sounds ghastly, but it is more than satisfactory. Feeling the breeze and hearing the distant trees puts me at ease, almost like you're telling me you're at peace. It takes a great disbelief to not feel any relief.
the tranquility provides stability. Photo Album, Margaret Roman. At 50, my mother announced she would no longer be taking pictures. Never a landscape photographer, mom took pictures of the family. We posed eating hot dogs at plastic red checkered picnic tables, swimming in the muddy bottom of Green Valley Park Lake, playing cards around the dining room table, dancing to Lawrence Welk on New Year's Eve. Grinning our progress through the decades, the naked baby with ripples of flesh on a blue blanket, first grade pals, Susie and me, both missing our two front teeth. Proud in a pink taffeta Easter bonnet, stepping forth with a diploma. A young woman in her 20s I thought it odd my mother would relinquish her role. It's your turn, she said. She never shot another frame. Now she would pose a memory for others to view. Now in my 50s, armed with digital, I click hundreds of megabytes. I trace the minute lizard concealed in mud, the Mexican border, equipped with La Migra patrol cars. Families squatting nearby in the Sierra Madres, cupping water from barrels. The barbed wire of Auschwitz, Birkenau, Majdanek. The A-bomb dome of Hiroshima on the green banks of Peace Park. Radiant votive lights before the altar of Our Lady of Guadalupe, mystical rose, Sweet hope in the midst of life's bitterness. Candles of remembrance burning in the gas chambers and ovens. The chanting of the Kaddish echoing against the smoky bricks. Floating candles shimmering against the night sky as they rise and fall on the rivers, once bringing death to scorched faces. I am the conduit of memory. I mark my children's faces on film or in the shadows of the still scenes. I bear witness, I remember. The eyes of my face are hallowed, flickering candles.
The Man Who Owned the Alphabet, Laura Winters. Not far outside our village, in a deep wood, a man opens the window of his well-insulated hut and sells letters to our townspeople. We are told each night which ones we may buy. A rusty voice calls out consonants and vowels, and we try to piece together the few words we can afford. Most of us buy only the letters we absolutely need to get by, bankrupting ourselves for the wrong ones, kept in poverty just to be able to say apples, hatchet, firewood. Still others pay exorbitant rates from the little they have. In the dead of the night, they come to the very small black window next to a holly bush. They go hungry to save an L or an S, hoping to use the leftover characters one day. We'd all be killed if he realized some of us saved these extras, wrapped them in plain paper, and hid them near the kindling. They say there is no place in our village for letters used the wrong way. Still, we hoard them in secret until we have enough to spell our own names. I don't want, Kathleen Cremens. The smallest small treasures the tiny pieces of her little world, alpacas, rainbows, unicorns, holding hands, a soft dog, whispers, cuddles to sleep, forehead kisses. She once rushed into school, a wee meteor burning to learn, playing with her friends, laughing with her teacher, her classroom, a land of possibilities. So when she arrives home crying, frightened by the alarms and police and bomb dogs, scared to see her teacher transform into a menacing stranger, pushing her students into corners under desks, an active shooter drill to the adults, the fracturing of a child's magic to a seven-year-old. I hold her calmly while I rage inside consumed by an angry prayer she will never hear. I don't want to celebrate kids who die protecting their classmates from school shooters. I want to celebrate their lives as everyday content kids. I don't want to mourn children shot in the head by cops. I want to see pictures of their first day of high school or middle school or kindergarten. I don't want kids learning how to stay silent in closets or being scared their shoes light up because there's another kid with a gun or how to keep their hands up and their heads down when they're being screamed at and put in a gun sight by police officers. I want to read graduation speeches, not obituaries. Fuck deifying children ripped apart by bullets. And fuck you if you say, yeah, but. The smallest small slides from my arms, peaceful now, and content to play with the large doodle dog and the biggest small, racing through the yard with abandon, her fear left behind for today. And I, now alone, weep for who we have become and what we fail to do.
poem for a great grandmother recently dead by Darnell Brown. How for all those seven years, all the generations before me were happy, or at least it seemed like it until you passed. Now they sit there and mourn and argue all day, as if that's going to bring you back. You meant that much to us. You were the heart and soul of this family. Now we're all divided. Don't even see everyone for Christmas. Just you being here brought everyone together. You were everyone's grandma, mother. Everyone loved you with all their hearts. And it hurt us to say goodbye to you. That was the hardest part, so we thought. But in reality, it is living without you that is the toughest. You made it easy and better for everyone. And your leaving made it harder. I was so young, I didn't notice what your presence did. I should have spent more time with you instead of wishing I had. You would have seen me grow into the young man I am today, forever wishing heaven had visiting hours because we would visit all day. Now seven years has passed and I finally realized why everyone was so happy when you were here. If I Knew Back Then by Billy Amaya If I knew back then that one day I'd be entering a new place, a much bigger place, a place something like my high school but never this huge or confusing that this new place can make or break you. And boy, do I drink my milk to keep up. I never pictured myself here in this place where I am, not seeing the same faces every day, not having classes from 8.30 to 2.45. It's really an unidentifying feeling. One thing I am really scared of is the fact that I don't know if I will meet new people here. Leaving my friends at home is hard, and I don't know if there is anyone like me at this place. It worries me a lot. Will the worry last the next four years? Of this new life, I'm about to take part in. I also hope the work isn't as stressful as they say, because I don't know I can manage. I just want to make friends. I just want to make it out. I just want to skip this feeling and be successful at this new place. 
If only I knew back then, maybe I wouldn't be so scared right now. If I knew back then that one day I would really be going to college. If I knew back then that one day I'd be into a new place, a much bigger place, a place something like my high school, but never this huge or confusing. This that new place, it can make you or break you. And boy, do I drink my milk to keep up. I never picture myself in this place where I'm not seeing the same faces every day, not having classes from 8.30 to 2.45. It's really an unidentifying feeling. One thing I'm really scared of is the fact that I don't know if I'll meet new people here. Leaving my friends at home is hard and I don't know if there's anyone like me at this place. It worries me a lot. Will the worry last this next four years? Of this new life I'm about to take part in? I also hope the work isn't as stressful as they say. Cause I don't know how I can manage. I just wanna make friends. I just wanna make it out. I just wanna skip this feeling and be successful at this new place. If only I knew back then. Maybe I wouldn't be so scared right now. If I knew back then that one day I would really be going to college. DeAndre Bob, the theme of my story. My professor told me to tell my truth. Honestly, I don't know my truth. I have an idea of what I want to do, but to learn about myself and learn my inner truth, that is the goal I must pursue. Not to plagiarize Lynx and Hughes, but I list the things I enjoy too. I'm from CT, I love my state, I love my city, I miss my family and I love to see my girlfriend sitting pretty. Those statements are surely true, but my identity? I haven't quite figured that one out yet. What about you? Maybe I can find solace in my writing and stop the internal fighting and find my voice. I start to see the path. It starts to get hazy. I start searching. I'll find my way. Maybe. Maybe my voice can be found in the page. Maybe the truth will be found today. Finding my truth is worth the wait, as the journey is thrilling and I have what it takes. In search of my theme, trekking the rest of the way until I find my truth. This is my theme I share with you.
My professor told me to tell my truth. My professor told me to tell Honestly, my truth. Honestly, I don't know my truth. I have an idea of what I want to do, but to learn about myself and learn my inner truth, that is the goal I must pursue. My professor told me to tell my truth. Told me to tell my truth. Honestly, told me to tell my truth. I don't know my truth. I have an idea of what I want to do, but to learn about myself and learn my inner truth, that is the goal I must pursue. But my identity? I haven't quite figured that one out yet. What about you? What about you? What about you? Maybe I can find solace in my writing and stop the internal fighting and find my voice. I start to see the path. It starts to get hazy. I start searching. I'll find my way. Maybe. Maybe my voice can be found in the page. Maybe the truth will be found today. Finding my truth is worth the wait. What about you? What about you? What about you? As the journey is thrilling, and I have what it takes, in search of my theme, trekking the rest of the way, until I find my truth. This is my theme I share with you. <laughs>